Hey there, this is Todd. I'm one of the developers of Eco. And let's get started. So I'm in my little garage here. Go ahead and open up. And yeah, today we'll be talking about upgrade modules, which is one of our new systems for crafting. So I'll go ahead and get started, head out here. You can kind of see we have some new roads coming, which is pretty cool. And off I go. Oh, what's this? Looks like I'm supposed to stop here. Coast is clear, so I'll keep moving. And here we go. Might not do the best parking job here. Hopefully nobody minds. But let's go on in. We have a nice little setup here. Uh, you might recognize this. This is our carpentry table. And this is one of our new tables, the advanced carpentry table. So. That's for our composites, one of our new specialties. So let's see what we got in here. Inside here you'll see some of these, which is our new modules. And you'll get to see how they work, but we have a whole bunch of different levels and tiers. These are modern upgrades, but the first ones I was showing were basic upgrades. So I'll go ahead and grab one basic, one modern, and we'll see them in action. So I pull up my carpentry table here. Looks like I may have already had a module in here, which is fine. Um, you can see it accepts a whole bunch of different kinds of upgrades. Now this is a carpentry table, so lots of different specialties use it. That's why you kind of see a big variety here. But basic upgrade is kind of a generic one, which it can accept everything of. And you can tell the things that are affected by this green box here. That means uh, it's being affected by a module, and we'll go back here. You can kind of see the benefits. So everything on this table, reduced crafting costs by 40%, reduced craft time by 40%. So that applies to everything on the table. So this is getting a craft reduction, craft time reduction, all that stuff. So I'll go ahead and start something. We'll do a contract board, maybe get help some people with some work parties. So I order that. It already knows I have the resources. And then I'll add the labor, which is like this. And we'll talk about that more later. But we kind of hinted that we have a labor system coming. And then I'll go ahead and move on to here, the advanced carpentry table. Did I leave a module on there? No, I did not. So this one takes modern and composite. So, oh, wrong button, I will open up my inventory here. Or I have it down here, my modern upgrade. So I'll go ahead and place that in. Same thing here, 40% reduction craft time, 40% reduction of the resource cost. And now I go to crafting. You see it has these same little green squares to represent it's being affected, but Everything on here requires composites, which is a pretty advanced skill. That's one of our new high-level skills for our new building materials. And so I can't craft any of these myself. But what I can do is place an order. So I'll make an order for some of these. You know what? I'll do the composite lumber itself because I actually have the ingredients. And make an order. And you saw that pop up. I needed uh, advanced composites, or excuse me, composites level one in order to do that, which I do not have, so the work button is grayed out. But what I can do here, there's a little carpentry or contract board out here. We kind of showed this off a little bit. I can make a work party, and it already knows. It's my most recent project, so they know that's what I want. And I have the resources, so I don't really need anybody to provide those. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that one. And I can request the labor. So somebody else can come do that that actually has the skill. And I can pick my payment down here. Currency, yeah, that, that seems good, 100. And why not? We'll give them some reputation, too. So if they're a good business partner, maybe we'll do business again in the future. So yeah, I'll go ahead and post that. Someone can get some credits, some reputation. And there it is. 
now available. And you see I even put a little marker here so people know to come. And the nice thing about that is you can kind of get a little business going. So even though I don't have the skill myself, the upgrade's in there. So anybody that has the skill is going to come do the work, get the benefits. So you can kind of have a business where you make some of the stuff yourself, but you have the whole production chain and you hire people. So there'll be a big labor market. And if I go to the economy viewer here, nothing for trades, but there's work party, the one I just made. And so a new player can come in, learn the composite skill. It's such an expensive, it's like the high level stuff. So you need a lot of material. So they're probably not gonna be able to jump in and make their own stuff, but they can get some experience. They can get some cash all just from, from helping out. They add, they add their labor. And we'll talk more about that in a future stream. But that's kind of the basics here. And I'll show something else really quick in here, which is how they're made. So we have the basic upgrade here. This is the starter one. It requires logging and some ingredients, nothing too fancy there. But then when we start to go up in the levels, you can see not only does it require ingredients, but it requires the previous level of upgrade. So you're going to keep, they don't kind of just turn into something you keep in your inventory. Each progressive level is still useful and needed to progress. Um, and that keeps going. So this one requires masonry. The third one we'll just skip because that's in a table. The fourth one requires basic engineering and the previous level upgrade. And we'll keep going to the final one, which is actually a specialty upgrade. So you can see here, it gets the 45% bonus, but then if you're crafting a carpentry skill, a recipe, you actually get an additional bonus. And the special thing about these two crafting them, uh, there's no extra ingredients besides the level four upgrade, but you can see it actually requires level seven carpentry. And my guy here has learned carpentry, but not level seven. So this kind of takes a while to make. And though it requires level seven to make, anybody can install it once it's made. So it's a kind of a nice bonus once someone's maxed out their skill. So we'll go ahead and bring this out. And you see I have a little station here already set up. There's already some iron ore in there. Alrighty. I can put my torch away. So I'll go ahead and put all that stuff in there. Now these two are some of our new mining stuff, our new mining objects. Which, again, we'll go over those in detail in the future. But the reason why I wanted to do this now, um, it's preloaded with a mining upgrade, which is the top of the line. Uh, but what you see here is these actually have yellow boxes around them. And what that means is it's not affected by the crafting cost reduction. You're still going to get the time reduction, but even with or without a module, you can see here, static value not affected by modifiers. And there's two reasons for this. One, from a realism perspective, it doesn't quite make sense that you're going to get extra stone from the same amount of rock. So we did that for realism, but also kind of a nice bonus is it levels the playing field for lower level specialties, like just basic mining stuff. You're still going to be able to contribute. Uh, but the labor cost will be a lot higher if you're not leveled up. So that's kind of the downside. And you'll see, I'll just do a brief order, crush some of my copper ore, add my labor, 100 units of labor. There we go, it's running. And we'll head over here, another one of our new mining objects. This one's a rocker box for concentrating ore. And here, it actually is affected. So you can be more efficient, get more concentrate for less. Uh, it actually helps the tanning production as well, so you won't have as many tanlings. Um, 
looks like I didn't put any crushed rock in there, so I'll go ahead and do that really quick. Forgive my loud keyboard. Oh, what did I do wrong? Not enough room. I'll just give 10 then. Can't touch. There we go. So that's in there now. And so I get going. I do get the reduction. Let's see exactly what it costs. 2.5. Because it's with a percentage. So that means if I do two at once, I'll get a little bit better bonus. And there we go. We're off. And you can see it has a cool little animation. We're still working on that. It looks like there's a little something going on there. But all of our new stuff has animations. And I have another chest here I set up. And you can see it's kind of the same things where it's the basic and the modern. You can tell the difference. It's a little bit hard to see here, but they all have tier symbols at the bottom. Um, in addition to these little dots, which means how quality they are. And something we did in this is we have like the technology get better throughout the eras. But then once you jump up era, you actually have to start over with your modules because a basic does not fit into like these heavy duty mining machines. And that applies, you know, you can't put a uh, masonry thing into an electronics. Um, as technology goes, you're going to have to keep advancing your upgrades. And we kind of talked about that in a bit in the blog, how we have an idea in mind called mature technology. So I can kind of show you, I think I forgot one here. As you level up, it starts off 10%, bumps up by 15%, another bump up by 15%, and then here it starts to slow down, 45%. And that's because that's kind of what happens with technology naturally. Um, it starts off when a brand new technology gets introduced, there'll be a rapid period of advancement, but as like the kinks get worked out, it starts to slow down. And then we start the whole process over again in a new era of technology. But yeah, this is another one of our mining machines. Oops, I didn't give it power, but that should be fine for this purpose. So, you can see here, modern upgrade, mining modder upgrade. So, I'll go ahead and try and put a basic in, but as you'd expect, it pops right back out. We kind of need a modern for this. So, I'll go ahead and put a modern in here. 25, 25. And again, this is for everybody it's not just me it's not just the owner of the table so you'll see it again this is a crushing machine so they're all going to be static uh, it's still good to put those in because it significantly cuts down on the craft time uh, but again you're not going to get the reduction and here with this one you can see it's a heavy duty machine so I can go back over here and show you real quick uh, the real basic, you know, grinded by stone, mechanical power, um, it can only handle the lighter stones, you know, the, the sandstones, the limestones. Um, but these heavy-duty ones, they can process any kind of rock. Uh, shale, slag, the works, they can handle the heavy stones. Um, and it's the same thing here. These all require mining, which I did not give myself, so I can queue up an order. Actually, I'll do the copper, which I actually have in my inventory. And order. Same message. I don't have mining, so someone else will need to perform the labor to start the work order. But yes, I do want to start it. And you can see same thing here. It's taken some of the resources, but I can't press the work button. So I'll have to hire somebody. Um, and same thing here, I'll go ahead, I didn't place one in advance, but I'll go ahead and place a contract board here. And when I go to create a work party, again, it already knows. It's looking for the most recent one. And if I've had multiple orders queued up here, which I'll just go ahead and do to show briefly, uh, it's going to find all of them and I kind of take my pick which ones I want to add. So I don't have any, I have crushed granite, so I'll, I'll do an order for crushed granite. And there we go. Still don't have this skill. And now when I go to make a work party, 
oops, excuse me, I already started one. It's a draft. It only lets you do one at a time just so it doesn't get clogged up. Uh, but yeah, I'll go to make a work party now. And you can see it. It's kind of spotted everything I need. I can have people add the raw material. Uh, I can request specialized labor. And same thing down here. Um, but I actually have the resources. Something that's kind of changed a little bit is in the past, um, it would just take all your resources at once, so it was kind of like an invisible storage. But now that's not the case. Um, it's going to add them progressively over time as the resource, as the labor gets processed. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these as well. Um, but now I'm looking for mining labor. And I'll just rename the party to that mining work party so people know what they're getting into. And um, because it's kind of different amounts of labor, well, in this case, it's the same. But I can go ahead and weight one of them. And what that means is the reward gets split differently. So the people that add labor to this will get two-thirds of the reward. People here will get one-third of the reward. Um, and there's a lot of different choices. We already showed the work parties, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. You can see quite a bit there. Uh, but I'll just make this one worth more. Maybe it's faster if I type it in. Well, that's quite a bit. Maybe not that much. And yeah, now it's all set up. My new mining work party. Go ahead and post. And here we go. It should show up here. It's not actually at the contract board because uh, you accept them over here. Or at least that's where it happens. And so now if I go to check the economy viewer and the work parties, we'll see both of them. Um, so people can kind of take their pick, get some Todd credit going after I set up my store. Um, and yeah, that's kind of the basics of upgrades. I'll check quick if we have any questions coming. Yeah, no more hammer space. That's going to be a very interesting interaction uh, because you can't just leave a giant work order and then have it processed when people come add resources. Um, you get the work order going, and then as people sell you stuff, uh, they can progressively add more and more labor. Um, and I didn't show this, but you can also have work party parties that accept the resources as well. So you can kind of just set up one of these advanced crafting tables uh, with the upgrade, and you're in business. Um, so we kind of envision that maybe for big corporations or things like that. Um, lots of employment for newer players to just kind of jump in and get going. Um, and let me just check here if we have any other questions coming. Uh, do they get experience from both contributing labor and using a pickaxe? So the answer to that is yes. Um, you do get experience from using your pickaxe and um, adding labor. And I talked about this in the blog, but uh, I'll give myself mining skill just to show. Actually, I already have it researched. Everybody does. You can see this is kind of cool. I showed it the different pictures we have now. Uh, but let's see. Where is mining? It's a masonry skill. So I'll go ahead. Oh, over here, I'll go ahead and learn that. Yes, I have actually gave myself a ton of stars just in case, so we're good there. Um, but I actually still can't add labor to this one because it's level two. So we'll go back over here. Uh, we'll do some of our crushed copper ore. Now it's 45 seconds, so you'll have to bear with me here. But I do the work, I add the labor, and you'll see now. Um, I actually have zero experience, and even adding the labor, it didn't give me any experience yet. So how it calculates is um, at the end of each iteration. So each time a copper ore gets produced, I'm going to get some experience because I added the labor. But if it was a work party, each person who contributed labor is going to get some experience. And that's actually done based on the amount they contribute. And you can see this is a pretty cool animation here of the the mining machine going. Looking forward to showing all those off, but it's a pretty cool new feature. Um, and so work parties are going to be a big difference now in how the game plays out. 
And without the upgrades, you can kind of imagine there's no real incentive to hire anybody if it's just going to increase the craft time, increase the resources costs. Uh, but there's no need to worry about that. It's going to be the same for everybody. Um, and so let me see if there's any more questions. I know, sorry, I have a really loud keyboard. Uh, maybe I can fix that for next time. I know it's a heavy duty mechanical one. Um, can we implement an input output function for storages? That one is a little bit complicated and it definitely is down the road, something we'd like to have. Um, but the best solution for now, let me just give myself another stockpile, put it in an awkward place here, but doesn't quite do exactly what you're adding, asking for. Um, but what I could do is I could have all my inputs down here, and then when something comes out, it's going to pop out in the top. I know I'm taking my time here. So it's going to pull from here, and then the output's going to go in here. So not exactly what you're asking for, but that's like kind of a temporary solution. But it's definitely something on our suggestion list we have idea to add down the road. Um, and yes, calories are based on resources. We're kind of still working with that a little bit, so we'll get the we'll get it fine tuned before 9.0. Um, but at this point, labor um, you can add as long as you have the specialty uh, and the correct level that is. Um, so I keep showing here. Um, when you look inside the rocker box, sorry, I'm reading out loud here. Aren't tailings going to be separated? So tailings are also a work in process. At this point, um, the tailings are um, still solid blocks, but the wet tailings are significantly more of a hazard. And um, they're produced, rocker box produces all wet tailings, but we have some more advanced machines that can produce dry if you're using iron. But I'm getting a little bit too much detail on the mining here. That's kind of we want to say for a future blog. I know I'm kind of showing them off. They're pretty cool, but we'll go over those in detail. Um, and that's kind of the basics of the overview of the upgrades. I'm wondering if anybody has any questions, because um, this one's a lot more kind of just explaining how they work, um, giving an overview. It's the kind of thing you're going to see a lot more when they're in action. Um, if you have an order for 99 hue and one log, sorry, I should stop reading these out loud. So no, you can't just add the labor and log off. Um, first of all, it's going to be, you have to eat a ton of food to do that, and that's going to be pretty expensive. Uh, but as people are adding uh, resources, they're going to need to keep adding labor. So that's why you kind of want these work parties to keep everything going. Because um, otherwise you're going to get sold stuff and potentially not be around to add the labor. So work parties are super helpful. Um, and we kind of already talked about them a lot. But one thing we didn't quite show, which is pretty important. Um, sorry, I know here comes loud clicks again. But I'll give myself a research table. And let's say we did want to get those composites going. Uh, because it's a pretty advanced skill. And so we didn't actually show this. But research is totally different now. Um, it's not just based on adding ingredients. There's actually research papers that are added by each individual specialty. Um, so everybody can kind of contribute in their own way. Um, but you see it requires a ton of labor. 10,000 labor, oh my goodness. So it's going to be pretty hard for just one person to do that. Um, so what generally happens with large research projects, I'll go ahead and get it going. And I don't have anything here. And excuse me, I actually have to own this table to do what I'm going to try and do here. So I'll give myself a property tool and some papers. Go ahead and claim this. And yeah, so now, now I'll start the project. Um, I can add, I'm going to go ahead and save everything for this work party and composites research that's exactly what it is so people there's a ton of ingredients needed ton of labor needed uh, so for this one I'll give them a ton of cash for filling this out because it's pretty important 
But here's another interesting thing. So you can actually give them knowledge for helping to this. So everybody that contributes is going to get the composites uh, research on their own. So it's kind of a community effort, nice thing. And you can pick the level of the minimum either resources or labor they have to add. In this case, because uh, it's both labor and resources, it's kind of just 10%, and that's based on the weight here. Um, and yeah, so someone's going to get rich from this. 10,000 Todd credits, those things are valuable. Um, so yeah, I'll post that one too. Same thing, where it's going to pop up here. I know it's kind of just isolated piece of property in the middle of nowhere, but we check the work parties, and it shows up here again and it will actually let us know we receive composites for doing this. And it's generally reserved for research projects, but someone who owns the skill book can actually give rewards of research as well. So it's another nice little cool thing about work parties. I'm, I'm venturing into other territory here, but I know we talked about that briefly in the past. I just wanted to go a little bit more detail and maybe not the best view of my mining setup here, but that's where we are. Um, let's see. YouTube's having issues. Sorry about that. Wouldn't it make sense for Composite Skillbook to require some of oil-based research? It's funny you ask that, um, because that's actually a project we have for this week, is to set that up. So you're a little bit ahead of the schedule. That is something we're doing. Um, so how is the payment split? How does it compare labor versus one ingredient? And that is, I was kind of showing with the weight. So this one, I'll pull up one of my current ones. This one's weighting them equally. So it's calculated percentage of what you add. And it'll be evenly split. So half the payment goes to the people that add the labor. Half the payment goes to the people that add the resources. And I can change that. I can't because it's already posted. Uh, work parts are a little bit different than contracts. But here, same thing. And it's actually, this one I set it up this way. So uh, it's not a 50-50 split. The person who does this is going to get two-thirds of the payment, or at least everybody that contributes gets that amount. Whereas this one, it's one-third because of how the weights are set up. So yeah, that's kind of, you get you to take your pick. You have a lot of flexibility there. And you can even have bigger work parties that combine multiple jobs at once. And same thing there, you kind of wait which one's more important, which are the more expensive ingredients. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility with work parties. Um, we, we did show them, but I feel like there's some other stuff we could have added on too, so you'll get it here. Um, and I'm going to keep checking in on chat here. Um, does it consider ingredients equal to each other? It does. Um, you can kind of pre-add some ingredients, so if you have what you need there, it's not going to calculate those. Um, but it doesn't separate the separate ingredients at this time. That's definitely something we can add. Um, but for now, if you kind of only want certain things, not just the whole project completed on its own, you can set up a store to do that. So you buy some stuff, and then as they get added, people are going to get the option to add labor, which is kind of, that's kind of how I would do it. Um, as if I was running a gigantic business. But if you have these upgrades, um, no reason to just not have the whole thing going. Uh, it'll really boost the production. Especially the nice thing is there's kind of an advantage right now for people who are online more often. But now it's kind of like you set up your infrastructure, you get your buildings going, and then it kind of runs itself with these work parties because you have other people contributing. Um, and it works two ways. I mean, you know, I'm kind of a capitalist here. I kind of am all about the business, but it really helps community too, because you can get a community job, uh, road building, contributing to the government buildings, uh, the laser even. Um, so yeah, there's a ton of flexibility there uh, with setting up community projects. And I have a feeling that research is gonna be a big community project. Um, so that's kind of the overview of that. There's not much, too much for me to show in this little mining area. I'm kind of going in circles again, which is kind of what I tend to do when I'm answering questions. Maybe I can fly my way back to over there. And so we can see the town just a tiny bit. Um, 
So if you have a truck project, adding combustion engine has the same value as adding one fiber cloth. Um, it is kind of set up that way, but like I was mentioning, you do have the option to add ingredients yourself. And when that happens, it counts you as part of the, part of the percentage for adding ingredients. So you can either do that before the fact or after the fact. Here I go flying away. Uh, but and you can also do both at the same time. So if you have a store buying ingredients, um, it will know when you've added something yourself. So um, there's some weird little graphic stuff. So I might actually end up back and kind of just check out the, the beauty of the land here. Um, but yeah, so you can kind of imagine if it's split that way, no one's going to really bring an advanced combustion engine unless that's the only thing you need. But that's where the stores come in. So you can do it that way, or you can just give them a big reward for adding the combustion engine. Uh, and let's see, I'm going to keep checking in. You're sh oh, I know, I think that's what it was. I flew too fast. I kind of did something there. So yeah, I'll hang out in the forest where it looks nice and pretty. You can see we kind of have a cold forest now, or a conifer forest, I should say. Uh, it used to be a lot of split different kind of trees, but now they're kind of bunch up together with similar types. You can see some redwoods. And the giant redwoods actually grow close to regular redwoods now. Uh, they let, they have a little sub biome in the cold forest. They can hang out in the more warm areas. So you can see it's border of the grasslands. So that's where they kind of tend to hang out. Um, and the other thing to note here, which was kind of shown in the mineral, or the mineral, not processing, but like the distribution bl blog and live stream, uh, this is a nice little new area for mining. It's big mountain ranges, so that's why I kind of chose to dig in here. I used my modern drill and found the good spot. Um, but yeah, a lot of changes to the world generation too, and those are still happening as well. Uh, and question about FBS, that one kind of comes up a lot. Uh, so that's a huge focus, and that's one we're not really going to release 9.0 until that's fixed, until there's major improvements there. And from our playtesting internally, and there already is major improvements, uh, but it's not at the point where we are, we're satisfied and going to call it done. That's definitely a huge priority for us, uh, and it's something we work on every day. So that's that. And maybe I'll just go on a tour of the world as I'm talking here. I'm venturing off the upgrades, but if anybody has any questions about the upgrades, uh, feel free to ask. I kind of gave a, a summary of all the different stuff, but maybe there's something I didn't cover there. Uh, and let's see. Performance of the web UI in large laws. So that's a huge overhaul we've done. Uh, the good majority of laws is now actually in game. And I'll close this. Away. Uh, so when you're setting up the laws, there's a whole new government UI, uh, which we've actually shown off in a previous blog and stream. So if you're curious, you can go ahead and check that out. But uh, so yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Huge improvements there as well. Not only is it a little bit more stable, but it's much easier to use, much, much. And it was kind of like it's set up almost similar like how you'd set up a contract or the work product I was showing. It's very similar UI, um, but it helps both ease of use and it just happens. It's much quicker, much easier to do because also you don't have to leave the game to do it. So government's another huge focus of 9.0 that we're expanding on. And yeah, I'm kind of standing in the grasslands a lot. Maybe I'll find a more attractive place to show off. Uh, I kind of have to go up this hill. I'll risk it. I'll try flying again, but we saw what happened last time. I don't want to go too fast. I tend to do that. Uh, so yeah, here's a nice little mountain range. I'm so tempted to go back into town, but I know I went so fast before. But you can see it looks really nice. We've uh, we've really expanded on the taiga and the tundra biomes. Um, there's a lot less uh, kind of spaces without plants. They're going to see a lot more variety and plants everywhere. So biomes is another fun thing we're working on. Uh, and it's loading a little bit chunky, so maybe I'll stop doing this because I don't think it likes me flying around like this. So we'll just keep exploring the wilderness as we talk um, because that was kind of what I had planned. 
to show off the upgrades. There's not uh, too much variety and things I can talk about. It's kind of more the thing you're going to see yourself. Uh, but work parties tie heavily into those. And you can see I'm like slowly making my way back to town. Maybe it will like it if I don't fly there and instead just walk. So I know it's funny. I shouldn't be flying right now. I learned my lesson. Um, so will existing version 8 worlds work in version 9? And the answer is yes. However, because we have the new government system and a lot of different changes, some stuff is going to get reset. So you're going to lose your laws. You'll have to remake those, um, which is going to be easy to do. Uh, yeah, I kind of messed up the town here, so I'll stay away. But the world will be transferable, but you'll lose some stuff. Also, you'll lose your kind of database of times, like what people have done and stuff, because we're going to a new system there. But it should the world should totally be playable, and I know a bunch of people are going to keep their old worlds, and we have it set up so everything will migrate. If there's a new version of an item, it will turn into that new version. But uh, there will be some things that you'll have to redo. So, But at the same time, hey, you get to experience the new 9.0 features. Uh, and I'm lost here. I'm just in the middle of nowhere. But hey, you get to see some beauty while I'm answering questions. And let's see. Buildings will still be there, yes. Don't worry about that. And like I said, any old items. We, ha we have both uh, renamed and upgraded some items. So there will be some items that will migrate into a new version. But they'll still be there. Don't worry about that. Uh, uh, whoops, what am I doing? I am going to risk flying once more. I want to try and find a new biome. I'm kind of stuck in the same little areas here. Lots of grasslands. Maybe I'll find something nice like a rainforest. Uh, but yeah, I didn't learn my lesson, actually. I'm flying again. So, there we go. Any plans for public mod API? Uh, I'm not 100% sure exactly what you mean by the question, but we're going to have something called the eco tree. We've briefly talked about it in the past, um, which explains all of our future plans, both what we have implemented and what we plan to add. Um, and so mod support's on there. And we kind of have the basics implemented. We have pretty good mod support now. But once we have that eco tree posted, you'll see what our future plans for mods are. And we, we don't have a set date for this, but we even have an idea to have a graphic user interface for mods. So it's a lot easier for everybody, more accessible. But that's not something we're working on for 9.0, but you'll get to you'll get to see that in the eco tree, which is a pretty cool thing. Um, oh yeah, the version 8 worlds won't have the new ore generation, which is another really cool thing. I'm not going to talk about that because it was already discussed in the previous one, but really big changes to how ore generates. I wish I had better lighting down there because I can kind of show you it's a big, huge clump of copper. Uh, but I'll just show this for anybody that didn't see it. It's kind of a cool thing. We've, oop. It's always kind of fun for people that missed the previous ones. So you see I got this modern rock drill. And coal was something kind of hard to find. I shouldn't say hard to find, but you had to get a little bit lucky and find the right spot. Oh, what's going on here? There we go. And so you can kind of see it's checking down. It found some clay, sandstone. No coal, though. So in the past, I would have just had to dig down, try and find some coal here, and it would have turned out I was unlucky. Um, and this one goes really deep, this modern one. So you can really get a good picture of what's down there. Uh, but it just saved me a ton of time. I don't have to dig down, find out there's no coal, and move on. So I can kind of just keep moving until I find a good area. So that plays in to the new ore generation. Uh, because it's it's completely done across the map. So yeah, that is one thing you'll be missing out on if you migrate to the old version from the old version, but it should still work fine. I know, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of showing off some of my favorite things that aren't necessarily 100% related to the upgrades. I've kind of covered a lot of that stuff, but I thought it'd be fun just to kind of show some other stuff. Um, the deserts felt more like forest. That's actually something I work on a lot, uh, is changing the biomes and the species distribution. And 
we have big plans for the desert in the future. Uh, put this thing away. Maybe I'll walk around with my torch. Oh, it's too bright for that. I'll just put everything away. But, yeah, we have plans ultimately to have, like, sub-biomes. So you'll see different types of deserts. Um, but at this point, how we've done it is Joshua Tree kind of grows in the wetter uh, and warmer. I think I said that right. I might have said it backwards. I should know this. But, um, yeah, so you're not going to see it throughout the desert. It was kind of a very basic implementation, implementation when we first did it. Uh, but now it's more focused, so you're not going to just see a giant desert full of Joshua trees. You're still going to see them, but it's not going to be the kind of thing where you can just get endless wood from there. Um, and so that's something that, another thing I said, we're working on the biomes a lot, so that's something to look forward to. Uh, and we do have new animals, things like that too, which you may have seen roaming around as I'm going around. It is a pretty big grasslands here. Um, Let's see other questions. I know every single stream, uh, the question about the boats comes up. So I can tell you, yes, they are being worked on, but no, they will not be in 9.0. Um, I know it's something everybody wants to see, but not quite ready yet. But I can tell you, I'm comfortable telling you they are in progress. So it's not something we've just forgotten about. Uh, we know what we've heard, and they are on the way, but not in 9.0. See, I can't give you, don't get too excited, because I can't give you ETA. Uh, just want you to know we did not forget about them. <laughs> uh, no more prickly fruits. So not only is there still prickly fruits, but there's even more cactus fruits. There's a lot of new, um, not a lot of new things, and that's one of them. So, oops, I didn't actually... I'm taking another risk here. I'm taxing. I'm on a laptop right now, so I am taxing my video card a little bit. I don't think it likes it, but I'll kind of just show you the desert. Yeah, see, it really doesn't like me doing this. Maybe I'll hide it with my map, um, but just wanted to give you a brief idea of the desert. Here we go. So yeah, prickly pear right here. Nothing to worry about there. It's still here, um, and you can kind of see there's a lot of cactus. There is still a lot of Joshua tree here. It just happens to be we're right next to a river. Uh, which is one of the more w moist places where the Joshua trees love to hang out. So it just coincidentally, I teleported into a place with a lot of Joshua trees. Um, but you can see as we move away from the desert, it's not so lush. And I, I meant to say as we move away from the river, I think I said that. But you can see the Joshua trees start to get less common. Um, there's still plenty of cactuses, agave, prickly pears, but you can see almost no Joshua trees over here until we get back to some of the more moist or borderline things because they don't like it in the super uh, arid parts of the desert. So that's just one one way we've changed the biomes a little bit, but that'll continue to change. We're fine-tuning that uh, as well, but there's been big progress, and I, I can see those guys really like this place. Those bighorn sheep, they seem to have found their, their favorite food source. Uh, but yeah, we have coyotes in the desert now, fox kind of hang out there, hare. Um, and so we're working on kind of having a, a food chain going. Um, and that's another thing we're expanding on a lot, but you can kind of get a good idea of it here in the desert. And I'm not sure why those guys love it so much over there, but yeah, those big horned sheep really like that one spot. Um, I know, hunters, we need more hunters. Um, and actually, Hunter is much more useful now. Um, the last stream I did, I kind of showed off the bows, but there's been boosts to animal populations. Um, so I don't mean populations, I mean health. So it's not so easy for a non-expert hunter to go around hunting, so there is definitely be demand for hunters. Um, and they have the new bows to help, too. But... Meat is meat and food both is in really big demand because of the labor. It's pretty nice actually. Excuse me, because food is in demand all game. I know, kind of in the past, um, you get these giant farms and people start to need less food, and also you know there's more efficient crafting, um, so the demand for food went down a lot. But you'll see farmers are going to be in big demand. Um, at all stages of the game. So that's another really nice thing coming with 9.0. And I hope you guys don't mind me just exploring here. Um, 
I'm staying out of town just because I don't know know if my video card likes it too much. But Joshua trees are nice looking. Maybe there's one more biome I can teleport myself to the rainforest if my graphics card can handle it. Um, but let's see what else. I know. <laughs> I happen to be in the one spot where the animals hang out all the time. Uh, uh, da, da, da. The wolf's dynamic with praise. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, animals are very dependent on their food sources. And I've actually kind of myself tweaked how the population growth happens. So you're going to see a lot more uh, equilibrium form over time. How the animals end up and where they end up. And uh, they, the predators are very based on their prey. So whatever eats a bighorn sheep is going to be super happy right now. Uh, I think it's the coyotes, so you can kind of see they're, they almost like spotted them and are starting to stalk them now. So I think they're going to be doing just fine. And not only that, but that will also start to affect the bighorn sheep population as more coyotes come, because they will, they will actually eat them. So something, something else kind of fun. Uh, thought going into diversifying diet yes actually that's something we've talked about a lot um not 9.0 potentially 9.1 i don't want to commit to that uh but we have talked about having more bonuses for having a diverse diet uh right now how it works you know kind of you can see all i've eaten is fat so i have a really low uh multiplier so you need balance of nutrients that way to kind of keep your skill up but yeah we have uh, big ideas for food in the future and one of them is uh not diversity uh but you know having a variety of food that's going to be a bonus in the future um let me see if while i'm talking i can find the way for it might be easier if i use this i'm not sure if anybody's not seen this before but we have little heat maps that kind of show tons of different information and in this case i was trying to find the rainforest which i did so We'll tax my video card just a tiny bit more here. My poor laptop. On my desktop, it runs thoroughly fine, so maybe I'll do that for the next stream. Uh, but yeah, we have to wait for it to load. A bit of a popular question. Will we get character customization? Now, I don't know why that's an unpopular question. I think that's a really good question. Um, but yeah, I mean, one thing, you, you already probably already know this. Oops. Uh, but... You can edit your guy here. I kind of have one of the more basic ones. Um, and you can get new clothing, kind of change how you look. Even in this screen, you can kind of change some of your clothing. That's a nice little vest looking thing there. You can change your hair or even go completely bald. Uh, and yeah, same here. You can change the colors. Nice little yellow shirt there, belts. And this is just the starter clothes. Um, there is additional clothes as well. Maybe I'll give myself back some hair. But uh, without going into revealing too much, we do have another other clothing customization. But that's kind of what we have for customization. Now, I'm not sure if that answered your question. But we have other ideas, too, coming for the future in that regards as well. Ah, uh, long hair. Well, that's a really good request. Um, maybe pass that one along asking for long hair for the female models. But now uh, it's everything's kind of unisex, both clothing and hair. Uh, so we don't discriminate there. But yeah, long hair is not a bad idea. So that's something we can kind of put in our suggestion area. And yeah, it's rainforest, as you can imagine, it's a little bit dark without a torch. But you can see it's nice and lush here. Um, we've done some things, so it's not quite as easy to stack tons of trees together, but in the rainforest, it can grow a little bit more dense. And I'm not sure if you see those little guys running away. Uh, that's some of our agouti. I think I'm saying that right, but it's a special rainforest. I think they're a rodent, but they're kind of, uh, actually I don't think that's quite accurate, but you can kind of see we have some new animals coming in as well. And I'll just kind of keep moving along. The grassland's nice because it's kind of a little bit brighter. Oh, and I can close my backpack. But, uh, does anyone have a guess? Sorry, so the update time, I can't give you a hard time. All I can tell you is we're working on it all the time. Uh, we know people are ready. We are in the stage where we're doing play testing. 
but you know we can't just say it's going to be released at this date we kind of want to make sure everything's right and i know there was that question about performance um, which is getting better every day but that's another one where we're not going to release it early if if it's not where we're in a place we're happy with uh, so maybe not the answer you want to hear but all i can tell you is we're working on it every day it's getting closer every day yeah new this guy kind of wandered out. This is the rainforest here. Hopefully I'm not revealing too much, but I think a lot of this stuff's already been seen. You can see here's a jaguar, and that's one of the Gaudi's main predators. But I guess this guy kind of wandered off, getting a little bit lost. But that's where he came from, is this rainforest right up here. And you see we got sunflowers now. Lots of cool little things. I don't want to ruin all the surprises, but it's kind of fun to show as I'm answering questions. Um, a thicker clothing for snowy mountains that's a good idea too um, however at this time there's definitely temperature in the game but it doesn't heavily affect the player it's more affects the, the plants and the wildlife um, but yeah that wouldn't be a bad idea for something to add in the future kind of different clothing for different areas uh, there's definitely we have a lot of ideas for clothing because um, there's so much potential for different kind of bonuses they give. But that's another one I'll kind of add to suggestions based on the stream. It's always good to hear feedback like that. Uh, but yeah, it, it's not something coming in 9.0, I'm sorry to say. But clothing, huge room for uh, growth there. And looks like questions might be starting to wind down at this point. Um, and... I've kind of covered most of the basics of the upgrade. You can tell because I'm just wandering aimlessly. But this one's kind of more question and answer than showing stuff off. And yes, you did see a tarantula there. So we have new invertebrates. Um, and that's something that's in a really early stage. But they're going to be expanded on. So there's going to be like prey of the invertebrates. So they're going to kind of be kind of like in real life. They'll be a big part of the basis of an ecosystem because some animals that's a big source of nutrients for them looks like we found a little oasis no wonder all these animals are hanging out here but yeah hopefully you guys aren't getting bored of the desert i like it a lot and we've kind of ventured back into the joshua territory i think they're maybe picking up on some of that water there they have big roots so they're probably can tell there's some water down there. It's helping him out a little bit. Um, but yeah, I like the coyotes a lot too. They're a really nice new addition. Uh, they really kind of help balance out the desert because in the past the desert was largely just herbivores. So it's kind of nice to add a predator in there, kind of keep things balanced. Um, let's see. New late game items for electronics. And the answer to that is yes. There is new items for pretty much everything. I'm trying to think of a specialty that does not have a new item, but I'm sure there is one I'm not thinking, but almost everything is has something new. In electronics, we have like advanced circuits. Um, we've, we've readjusted some of the costs for things, um, but electronics, is, it's gotten some attention, and you know that's a crucial one because it makes the laser. So without that, it's kind of... Things aren't looking too good without electronics. And so I'm hearing questions about is the desert still the best place for iron? And it definitely is still one of the main biomes for iron. I'm not sure if I'd call it the best. But with the new ore generation that was showed off, there's much more variety in the biomes. So I know in the kind of the past, there was maybe three or four biomes that were considered to be like, you need somebody to settle in there. Uh, but it's much more variety now. So you have choices where you want to settle. Clay is not just in the rainforest. It's all over the place. So yeah, much more variety. Where you can settle, what you're going to find there. Both animals, plants, and minerals. So maybe I'll head back into the forest one last time as I get ready to wrap up. You've all gotten a nice tour of the grasslands and the desert. Wish I could be in town a little bit more, but that'll be for the next one. Um, 
and you can see you can tell we're back in the forest now because you see the mule deer, otherwise known as elk, in eco or just the plain deer. Uh, so yeah, there we go. I know what you mean. Yeah. So I hear a lot of talks about the desert and the iron. So yeah, I think I kind of just answered that. So it won't be the kind of. I'm sure the desert's still going to be really popular for mining purposes because that kind of is its specialty. But you'll have more more choices, more variety of where you can go. And I think they may have showed that in the previous blog, the, the numbers, but if not, you'll get to see that at some point. Um, so I think we've almost back where we started now. Yeah, I'm headed back to my mine. You can kind of see my work parties. You don't have to leave that on the screen all the time. I kind of left all my markers on. Maybe I'll get rid of that now so it's not so crowded on the screen. But it is a nice... Oops. But it is a nice thing for people to know, hey, there's a work party here, come help. Because I have a feeling that's going to be a huge part of the economy early. Especially for the reason I said you can get experience that way. Um, I know in the past you, you kind of had to level up to be competitive. So there was a huge advantage to people who already had joined the game earlier and already leveled up. But now kind of the advantage goes, it's still true if you're established you're going to have an advantage but it's more about the modules, the upgrades. Um, so a new person can join and get work right away. And if they happen to make some enough money for an upgrade, then they can start hiring people themselves. So a big new way to join the game early. Um, what is this? Let me see here. So actually, I'll be honest here. I have it set to the absolute maximum graphics because I wanted to show everything off, but maybe that wasn't the best idea considering I'm on a laptop. It is a nice little gaming laptop here, but the artist won't be too happy with me if I do this, but I'll just go ahead and do it anyway. <laughs> I'll turn everything down just so you can kind of see. Forgive me, artists. Um, but you can see a lot of this just has to do with the fact that my setting is on absolute maximum. Oh my goodness, that was not the setting I wanted to change. Whoops. There. So you can see it looks a little bit more basic now, but very basic. I turned them down all the way, so it's the exact opposite. But runs super smooth, so you don't necessarily need the nicest computer to play on those settings. Kind of like most games. I, can, I have it very constant. I actually set it to 30 max, so that's why it's staying right around there. But I'm sure I could actually bump it up and it would go up. Um, but yeah, not too attractive, so I apologize. I'll maybe go ahead and switch it back because I don't think they'll be very happy. I'll go ahead and turn everything back on. So you see lots of different settings. It's pretty customizable based on your hardware. There, looking nice and pretty again. Um, I know, I have it on Ultra. <laughs> That's why... Uh, that's the only reason why it's kind of taxing my laptop a little bit. I mean, laptops can only handle so much themselves, but I think it's running pretty nice and looks pretty beautiful here. Nice sky. That's the nice thing about turning up the sky. It looks really nice. Um, but yeah, I'm just running in circles here. I know this isn't going to be the most visually appealing stream here. Next time I'm going to set up... Uh, my stuff in the town, so I don't have to leave. I don't think it likes me flying and teleporting so much. Uh, that's something you're not going to see unless you're an admin, so kind of pushed it to its limits a little bit. Uh, let's see. Will we get visible rainfall eventually? Yeah, weather is another thing we have down the road. Um, you'll get to see an idea of this, as I mentioned, when you see the eco tree. Um, we kind of previously had the road map, but that's getting replaced. But at this point, how we have it set up, you might already know this, is it's one of our heat maps. Uh, it's moisture, there it is. So you can see fresh water, uh, not too many spots for something going on there, but rainfall, you can kind of see in the rainforest, of course, there's going to be much more rainfall. Uh, some areas, not so much, like uh, I'm not exactly sure where the desert is in this view, but you get a much better idea and soil moisture is pretty cl closely tied to the rainfall, not exactly. 
but there's other there's slight differences between those two. Uh, I might turn it back off. So yeah, uh, not quite visible rainfall yet, but we have kind of the backbone in place for the rainfall, what it does. So um, down the road, it's another one of those down the road things, but it's something we've definitely considered and you'll see it pop up on the eco tree. Interactive maps, we kind of have that already, so I'm not sure 100% what you mean. But you can see we actually have the map down here, which is a nice little thing. And we have more options with the map too. So if you want to have a map with detail, previously you had to pull up over your whole screen, but now you have a lot more flexibility. You can actually access this from this screen. So let's say I did want to check, uh, let's say I'm trying to grow some tomatoes. How would I do that? So go to the plants. We've got quite a bit of plants here. Maybe I should have picked one higher up in the list. But there, tomatoes, yield potential. And you can see I'm pretty close to a good spot. These are all definitely capable of growing tomatoes. But it looks like this is the prime spot right up here. And I can go ahead and close that so I get a bigger view or even adjust the size of this. So let's see where they really want the tomatoes. What's so good about that spot? Ah, I see. There's a river over here. And so, it must have nice good moisture for those tomatoes. The, the river seems to be a nice supporting of life, which you do expect. Uh, lots of plants grow by the rivers, lakes, things like that, because it helps with the moisture. Um, so now I'm headed back here. Server stability. Again, this is something the performance questions are coming up a lot, and yes, there will be significant improvements uh, across the board. RAM, uh, amount of processor it takes, those are all things we're working on. So yes, uh, definitely going to be improvements. And we're moving some things. Yeah, I can see someone's kind of saying the same thing there. So, uh, will trees consume soil nutrients? Yes, and... Fertilizers is still one we're expanding on, because uh, as you can imagine, there's huge potential for fertilizers. Um, the full remake is probably not going to make it into 9.0, but we have a ton of ideas. Um, so fertilizer is still going to help with things like growing time and yield. That's already in place, but um, not quite. We, our full plan is not implemented yet, and we kind of have a list of ideas for ways we want to have them have a bigger impact. Um, so 9.0 not coming, but again, uh, plenty of future updates. We have big plans for 9.1 as well, which I probably shouldn't be getting into right now, but just wanted to answer the question is, yes, that's something we have in mind. And, and how is the question, what's the ideal population? Um, can't really answer that because everybody's different. Um, some people enjoy playing with a small group of friends. Some people, you know, enjoy the big giant servers. Uh, and it can be played in a classroom, you know, 30 people that are playing regularly or even less. Um, it kind of depends on what your goal, what you're looking for. And not only do we have the previous collaboration setting you've always had, which kind of determines how quickly you level up, but we also have a new setting uh, which closely ties in, which is how much resources everything takes. So I know it can kind of it can kind of take a lot if it's designed for maybe 10 or 15 people to get all the mining material for just two or three people to pull that off. Um, but there is a new slider now. So it is going to be easier for both smaller groups and hey, if a big group want to make it even tougher, they could go the opposite direction. So there really isn't an ideal number uh, yeah. I'm sorry, I got distracted reading your questions again. And yeah, playing through solo, that's something big we had in mind because a lot of the features in 9.0 actually are encouraging more collaboration. Um, so we didn't want that to hinder single players. Uh, so that's kind of a large part of the reason why we did add that slider for amount of materials needed. And, you know, you always have the collaboration settings. One of them is designed for 
one to three players, so you're going to set it to that and maybe turn down the resources need a little bit if you enjoy playing in single player. Um, sorry, I'm kind of reading through questions again because there's some are starting to come in. The game's been in development for quite a few years. I actually don't know. I'm one of the newer employees, so I can't tell you offhand exactly which year it started, but it's been years in the making, and it's come a huge way since then. Um, even since I've been around, it's changed dramatically. Uh, when I first, was, there wasn't even uh, a rainforest, so that's a pretty huge addition. And uh, part of when they added the rainforest, I know the wetlands went away, um, but the wetlands are back now, so yeah, constantly adding new stuff. Uh, can that slider change during a game? Yes. Um, it's actually, uh, slider's maybe not the right word, but it, it's actually done through the server UI. It's a value, um, and there are going to be presets, but yeah, it's not going to happen instantly, but if you change those settings and then restart the server, uh, it'll be taken effect as soon as the server's up again. So if it turns out you maybe didn't set it correctly or you, or you feel like you want to change it, no problem to change it in the middle. Or even an existing server from 8.0, if you want to change it when you swap over, no problem. Um, when So a lot of these questions about when are hard for me to answer, especially if I'm not the person working on it directly. Um, but I can tell you those things are being worked on all the time. That's one with the, the oil and the liquid transportation. That's a really fun one, uh, and we've talked about that. But again, I can't give you a hard date or time other than just to say I know it's being worked on. And something I've said before is when the eco tree is updated, you'll, you'll be able to keep a very close eye on both our plans and the current status, like what we're working on at the moment. So uh, everybody will be a little bit more in the loop. That's a, uh, not quite an in-game feature, but more of a community interaction we're really looking forward to a lot. And yeah, oil, I can't, I don't want to reveal everything we have in mind, but we do have big plans for oil in more than one way, so I'll leave it at that. And <laughs> I see that's about the wetlands, that's pretty funny. Um, but yeah, it does look like questions are starting to wind down. This was actually a pretty long stream, um, which is funny because it was mostly just Q&A. We didn't actually, most of our time just wandering around the biomes just talking, which I'm happy to do, but maybe not the most visually stimulating thing. Uh, especially, you can see I made my way back to the desert. I'm kind of just a, a desert nomad. I like it here. Um, what did I talk about utilizing eco in school? Now, yeah, I was going to say, he, he beat me to the punch. Uh, I was going to say, talk to Dennis. And yeah, Dennis will get you all the information you need there. So I know it's a, it's a really fun thing that it can be into schools, but not my department, so I'll leave it to Dennis there. What's the plan for inventory management? So I can't quite show off how they work, but maybe I'll just very briefly show you this. Um, These are still work in progress, uh, but look at this massive thing. What's blocking it? Yeah, see, it's hard to find a spot. Maybe, goodbye, desert. I'm going to level you out. Where did it go? Yeah, sorry, desert, but I want to show this off. So look at, uh, yeah, like I said, they're work in progress, but look at that massive thing. So you may think, yeah, horizontal stockpile is not going to help too much. Uh, but it really does help because it's vertically taller. So you can fit much more stuff in per, per area. And if that's not enough for you, we'll do one more. And I'm sorry, again, I apologize to the desert. But here's our, our big massive one. So yeah, oh, I'm having some visual issue here, forgive me. But yeah. So you can imagine, and as, as far as it is wide, that's how tall it is. So this should really help with inventory management because we have new log types, we have new rock types, 
uh, maybe that's not the right word. We have a ton of different variations. I meant to say we have more yeah, variations of building materials, like hardwood, softwood. We showed off a little bit. So there is a bigger need for inventory space, but there's also, we added these to kind of compensate the lumber stockpiles, tier two stockpiles. So yeah, it depends which inventory you're putting in, how much it can store, but uh, yeah, that should really help a lot. More ways than one. So, yeah, it does look like questions are starting to wind down. Um, but it was really fun having everybody. I know we kind of went off track a lot. Not so much about the upgrades for most of this stream, but hey, I'm fine with that. As long as everybody's uh, getting their questions in, happy to answer. And so, yeah, I'll do one last check. Anybody have any questions? Um, so I do see one popped up, breeding. So that kind of, at this point, it's kind of happens on its own. Uh, if there's a, a nearby animal uh, with each other and they have plenty of food, they'll kind of reproduce based on each species a little bit different, how quickly and how frequent it does it, or how, how many per litter, I should say. Um, but it's not, we don't have domesticated animals just yet, but that's down the line, but... So no, breeding happens, but not, not at by human hand. Uh, game optimization, that question is coming up a lot, and I've kind of answered it already, but that's a gigantic focus of 9.0, so that will be coming. Do not worry there. And look at new transmission poles that I, I didn't show them last time. I'm happy to do this, because this is something I talked about last time. So, wait, is that right? Uh... I think that we're still working on that. But basically what it does is it doesn't produce any energy, but it can transfer it. Because I know in the past people did stuff like make street lights to move electricity, but then it even took up some electricity as it went, or just kind of small lamps, things like that. But now you can put up a big power station off here in the desert. We're already kind of transforming it a lot. And then pipe it into somewhere a little bit more sensitive to the environment, like... If you needed power in the rainforest, you wouldn't have to worry about polluting it so much as piping the power in. Um. <laughs> I don't know why. What did I do? Someone's laughing, but that's fine. Oh, I know why, but that's okay. I think it's because my reaction. Uh, power lines and more realistic power. Yes, absolutely. That's when, this is kind of the first step, but Utility companies, things like that, there's so much potential there. So uh, definitely something down the line. And this is kind of the first step. That's kind of how we do things. We put in the foundation, and then each progressive patch, they get updated. So this is step one, and you'll continue to see new steps. Does the steam engine require water now? Um, can't answer that uh, off the top of my head. I apologize. But... A lot of new requirements across the board, like, for example, some items pollute now that didn't before, um, lots of changes like that. Unfortunately, I can't tell you off the top of my head if the steam engine is one of them, but maybe next time I can answer, uh, or you can ask me in Discord. But yeah, I know, there's lots of things, and oil, the oil refinery is another one that has a pipe input, because it's kind of a future plan, but uh, that's one, as we talked about, it's coming soon but not in 9.0. Um, so that is an idea we have for oil in the future. And yeah, it looks like questions are wrapping up now. Hope you enjoyed this tour of the desert, or really, I hope you guys enjoyed checking out the upgrade modules, getting some questions in. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the stream right now. Thank you so much for everybody tuning in. It was really nice chatting with you. And any questions, you can always message me in Discord. I'm Todd in Discord. Uh, or you can send me an email, either one. But, yeah, great, great talk with everybody. And uh, we'll do another one real soon. All right? Take care, everybody.